Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. This video is part of a mini-series that aims to take a look at the fundamentals of moss chip fabrication and the major steps involved in the process flow of moss chip fabrication. This video is not meant to present a detailed discussion of silicon fabrication technology, which in itself is a huge topic, but rather is meant to briefly present the general outline of the process flow of NMOS fabrication. If you haven't checked out the first video, I would highly encourage you to do so as this video will pick up from where we left off last time and will heavily require your understanding of lithography. In this video, we will first briefly revise what n-type and p-type with semiconductor materials are and then walk through the fabrication process of NMOS transistors. Before we take a look at the fabrication process of the NMOS transistor, let's refresh and touch on the definitions of n-type and p-type semiconductors. Semiconductors are a special class of elements having a conductivity between that of a good conductor and that of an insulator. There are three semiconductors that are most frequently used in the construction of electronic devices and they are germanium, silicon, and gallium arsenide. Intrinsic semiconductors are semiconductor materials that have a really reduced number of impurities. Essentially, it's a pure semiconductor material that is as pure as can be made through available modern technology. To better understand semiconductor materials, remember that a silicon in a silicon crystal has four electrons in its valence shell and it creates covalent bonds with neighboring atoms. At zero kelvins, all bonds are intact and no free electrons are available for current conduction. However, at room temperature, some of these covalent bonds are broken by thermal ionization. Each broken bond gives rise to a free electron and a hole, both of which become available for current conduction. N-type materials are silicon crystals that are doped by pentavalent elements. And pentavalent elements are elements that have five electrons in their outer uh, valence shell. Each atom of the pentavalent element becomes a dopant atom and donates a free electron and is thus called a donor. The doped semiconductor that is doped by the pentavalent element becomes an n-type material. The p-type is a silicon crystal that is doped with a trivalent impurity or element and that means that we are by diffusion or by implantation, we are introducing a trivalent element that has three electrons in its valence shell. And therefore, this dopant atom of this trivalent element gives rise to a hole. An example of a pentavalent element is antimony, and an example of a trivalent element is boron. Starting where we left in our last video, the process starts with the oxidation of the silicon substrate, in which a relatively thick silicon dioxide layer called the field oxide is created on the surface of the silicon substrate that is primarily a p-type substrate. The silicon dioxide layer is used as an insulator in semiconductors. The field oxide is selectively etched to expose the silicon surface of the p-type silicon semiconductor on which the MOS transistor will be created. After this step, the surface is covered with a thin, high-quality oxide layer, which will eventually form the gate oxide of the MOS transistor. On top of this thin oxide layer, a layer of polysilicon oxide is deposited. Polysilicon is used both as a gate electrode material for MOS transistors and as an interconnect medium in silicon integrated circuits. Undoped, polysilicon has relatively high resistivity, 
but this resistivity can be reduced by doping it with impurity atoms. After depositing the polysilicon layer, it is patterned and etched to form the interconnects and the MOS transistor gate. The thin gate oxide not covered by the polysilicon is also etched away which exposes the bare silicon surface on which the source and drain junctions are to be formed. The entire silicon surface is then doped with a high concentration of impurities either through diffusion or ion implantation and in this case since we're trying to create an NMOS transistor we will be doping the surface with donor atoms to produce n-type doping. This doping process penetrates the exposed areas of the silicon surface, ultimately creating two n-type regions in the p-type substrate, each for the source and drain. This impurity doping as well penetrates the polysilicon that is exposed on the surface, reducing its resistivity. Once the source and drain regions have been defined, the entire surface is again covered with an insulating layer of silicon dioxide. This layer is also patterned in order to provide contact windows for the source and drain. This surface is covered with evaporated aluminium which will form the interconnects. And finally, this metal layer is also patterned and etched, completing the interconnections of the MOS transistor. Thank you for watching this video. In the next few videos, we will be taking a deeper look into MOSFETs and their fabrication process, their operations. So stay tuned for those videos. And if you found this video useful, Consider liking and sharing it with people who might find it interesting or useful. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so through subscribing or through Patreon, where you will find the link for the Patreon page of this channel in the description below.